y'all. Kay here with Big Dreams Designs. And I wanted to take a few minutes to show y'all how I went about creating and making some of my own baby bibs. I looked online and I found a whole bunch of just typical sewing patterns. But I'm just one of those, I want to do it in the hoop and I just want to show you how I process and how I went to do it. The first thing that you need is the pattern. So I went and did a Google search online and I found one on a blog at www.marymarthamama.com and she created this pattern and it was a free pattern that you could download as a PDF. Now we know that Stitch Era does not open PDF files so how I go about getting the image is Windows computers have what they call a snipping tool and it's just an app that's just in the system it new and then you just select whatever part of the image that you need now I accidentally cut that one off but you get the idea and then you would save it to your hard drive here and I've already done this so let me show you what we do next okay we open up our stitch era we go to artwork and open image. Here is my template. The first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna convert this to a vector. We only need two colors. We're gonna hit filter, vectorize, and return. Now the next thing that I do in order to get a shape here is I'm gonna go to here I'm going to go to Auto Trace and I'm going to zoom in here and select that image right there. You can see the marching ants around the design. I'm going to hit Enter and there is our design. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete all of the initial vector designs that we did and keep just the red one. We're going to take this design, we're going to right click copy, right click paste, we're going to go to layout, we're going to vertical mirror, and we're going to put the two pieces together. I like to change the other opposite side so I can see where I'm lining up. We're going to get it as close as possible. Now we're going to select both vectors and we're going to right click combine addition and it will turn it into a single design. Now let's go ahead and rotate this image 90 degrees. I've determined that a design of 11.5 tall fits great in the jacket back hoop for the Avance. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to also um, create this again. We're going to copy and paste this design. Okay, now we're going to turn this one into just a border with a thickness of one. The reason we created this vector is in order to do a final stitch tacking down the backing fabric, but we're going to leave a gap to be able to turn the bib. We're just going to do a basic rectangle shape and we're only going to make, we'll give us about say three inches. We're going to turn it into a solid. We're going to select the rectangle you just made and the vector. We're going to hit right click. We're going to combine and we're going to exclusion and that's going to remove that section that is underneath it. So we're going to select these two pieces and remove those. Now that we have our vectors created, we're going to go to embroidery, path, path with running stitch. And I'm going to select that and hit enter. There is our initial tack down. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do our last tack down stitch. 
we're going to go to embroidery embroidery path with running stitch we're going to go to auto auto trace center path now I wanted the last one to stitch twice to give more reinforcement to the stitch and you can see here that we still have the gap in place we're going to hoop some quilt batting and float our initial top fabric on top so let's quilt this so our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to embroidery uniform area and area with texture I did learn that I, when I first tried to do this I used area with programmable stitch and what I found out that I was not able to adjust the stitch length with these type of stitches if you expand an area the stitch length also expands however with area with texture I selected a basic criss crosshatch type design and hit OK and I adjusted this to a 5.0 and you can see that it gives you the option to adjust your stitch length if you want to and we're going to auto complete the section hit enter and generate our stitches okay and there is our quilted design all right I've turned off my vectors here as you can see and we have our quilting pattern here let's move this item up underneath and let me go ahead and let's duplicate this pattern we're going to right click copy right click and paste now let's scoot this over and let's rotate the image 180 degrees okay let's get in make sure that we're within our the parameters of our hoop all right looks like we're doing pretty good here at this point now um, I have a few little cute designs that I've already created so we're going to go to home and catalogs and I have them already done and let's go let's just do a couple simple ones here so there's two of them let's go ahead over here let's check our start and stop let's just go ahead and start and stop to over here together and let's do this one programmable stitch these seem to work pretty good when you have your starting up here and your stopping up here and the final thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our final tack down stitches need to get moved down all the way to the bottom let's do both tack down stitches okay then we have both our programmable areas let's put this one here so it's going to go tack down tack down quilting quilting and then it will start doing the phrases and then it will do the final tag down stitch we'll go over to our table and I will show you how I go about preparing for the hooping of this and we'll stitch them out and show you what they look like okay in preparation for the in the hoop bibs the only thing that I have hooped here is a piece of polyester batting and I'm going to spray baste and at float my top piece of fabric for the bibs
Okay, we stitched out our design. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cut this out. Okay, I've cut everything out. I've turned the bibs and here are the finished product. When you are cutting them out, I would advise that you leave an extra material in the gap area on both the front and the back. It does make it easier to be able to turn it in and be able to stitch those down. So the last thing that I would do to these is I would go around with my sewing machine, go along the edge and just do a top stitch. I would add a snap, um, Velcro, you can add e any of those things to it. But I have some snaps, so I will just attach a snap. And we have finished our In the Hoop bibs. Appreciate you watching, and I hope you learned something.